All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking Raptors. We're out here actually at, at Swaggy's house, so the setup's a little bit different. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. The Raptors, we already kind of knew this, judging from last season, just what they did with everything that happened to them, injuries, COVID, what have you. Co going from getting the fourth pick in the draft to being the fifth seed in the playoffs is one hell of a jump. And uh, they're going to continue to ride that momentum. They, they made some great moves this offseason, specifically signing Otto Porter Jr. I would say this was a move that was definitely needed. And Otto can fill multiple roles. He can play and guard multiple positions if need be. So it's kind of a jack of all trades. And uh, it just gives you... Gets you a little excited about the Raptors' upcoming season, man, especially that mid-season trade deadline acquisition of Thaddeus Young. They're, they're, they're not messing around, and I don't think that they should trade for Kevin Durant. I think the asking price for KD and every superstar right now, probably because of the Gobert trade, is a little bit too sturdy. It's a little bit too high, so we'll see what ends up happening with the Raptors, but I would anticipate and actually kind of hope that Kevin Durant doesn't make his way there. Before we actually get into the meat of this video, if you guys like daily Raptors content, if you're a Raptors fan, go ahead, check down below. I have a daily Toronto Raptors channel where I'm going to be posting, you know, kind of pregame videos, postgame videos, that type of stuff, just daily Raptors content. So check that out, link down below, or type in Raptors Daily on YouTube. So when we look at this roster, we look at the core. I have a little tweet here from, let's give some credit, Pascal Propaganda. I absolutely love it. Three players essentially are going to be fighting for the last three roster spots. And it's looking like it's going to be Svi, Delano, Armani, DJ Wilson, Justin Champagny, and then recent addition Juancho Hernan Gomez. This is going to be a this is a camp battle. So as far as early prediction goes, I mean, I would say Delano Banton's definitely going to get one. Uh, I heard Armani Brooks is really impressing. And then my next guess would it would be somebody of DJ, Justin, and Juancho basically. I guess whoever's producing, whoever has the better camp, whoever, whoever wins that is going to probably at least have a little bit of a impact on the Raptors this, this upcoming season. We are top 12. You got Freddie, you got Gary, OG, Pascal, Scotty Barnes, Precious Achua, Boucher, Thaddeus Young, Otto Porter Jr., Ken Birch, Malachi, and new uh, first round, not sorry, not first round draft pick, Christian Coloco from the draft this past year. So, early way too early season prediction um i would probably go somewhere along that five seat i think a lot of this upcoming season depends on i i'm very hopeful that precious achua not only has he been getting so much praise but he had a phenomenal second half of the season and i thought he rode that momentum well heading into the playoffs Honestly, altogether, Precious Achua had one of the more underrated seasons, I think, in the NBA for like low key players because the way Nick Nurse, the way the Toronto Raptors are talking about Precious right now, heading into these, in, heading into camp, is they're literally saying, like, hold, just wait, just wait on it, be patient because he's about to take a jump. He's about to get to that next level. So, Precious Achua, I mean, Bro, he shot like 38% from downtown in the second half of the season. This is a guy who made one three in Memphis and his rookie season with Miami. Like, yeah, he didn't play too much with Miami playing behind Bam, but gets an opportunity in Toronto. And he really, really was such a, not necessarily a breath of fresh air, but he, he just offers you so much, even just as far as like morale and energy goes. So I anticipate a big jump for Precious Achua. We also know Pascal Siakam, hopefully he can stay healthy for this whole season as we know last year took him like what was it six to eight it was somewhere between six to eight weeks till he made his debut and once he came back it took him you know a week or two to kind of get into the flow of things to put up some efficient nights but once Siakam was cooking no one was stopping that man I mean nobody was stopping Siakam he was even he added uh, I know Siakam's been a good passer I know he's a solid passer but this this past season, I saw so many shot creations, so many new looks, better looks just because of Pascal Siakam's passing vision and ability. I saw some things that I have not seen Siakam do before, and I would say he's really honing in as just being an all-around complete basketball player, whether it's on the offensive end or whether it's on the defensive end. So if you get a healthy Pascal Siakam, I mean, the sky's the limit with him. He's all-NBA player. This guy, you know, Siakam's the dude. 
he's that guy. So right behind him, I think we kind of know what we'll get from Freddie. Super reliable, super durable. Hopefully Armani Brooks, Delano Banton, whoever, Malachi Flynn, whoever's going to be that backup or just kind of coming off of the bench. Hopefully they can provide some really good efficiency, some really good output so that you can give Freddie that rest because, you know, we saw... I mean, I know not many people, not many players are fully healthy going into the playoffs, but nursing that hammy would have been a lot easier had the Raptors had proper guard depth this past season. So, Freddie, I would am, I would imagine he's going to continue to do his thing, and there will be no issues with Fred. Gary Trent Jr. had a, I mean, not necessarily breakout season, but he had a very good season. Uh, like he had like over two steals per game. He was the lead in the league in steals for quite some time. So, Gary Trent Jr. I mean, if he were to get up to even like 20 points per game, which is just a couple notches below there around 18.2 this past season, Gary Trent Jr. offensively and defensively, I mean, he's going to offer you a lot. So just more good, solid, reliable depth, especially as far as shooting the ball goes. Now, OG is going to be interesting this upcoming season because oh, we haven't really seen a full, all complete. I can't tell you the last time we saw a full, complete season with OG and Anobi at the helm. I mean, when he is healthy, he is a stud. 3 and D prototype, like, when you think of a 3 and D player, especially on the salary OG is on, like, OG is the player that comes to my mind when I think of the ideal 3 and D player. This guy is a workhorse. He can guard and play multiple positions. We know this, you know, Nick Nurse, Masai, they love this kind of interpositional, interchangeable, positionless basketball, and OG fits it perfectly. He's like a 40% three-point shooter. He can do a little bit of everything. He was one of the more sturdy and reliable players this past playoffs against the Philadelphia 76ers. So if OG can stay healthy, you might see a breakout season from him. Scotty Barnes, I'm anticipating him to just continue to, to add to his bag of tricks. I think we'll see a more consistent, not elite, but we'll see a more consistent shot from Scotty Barnes, which is really going to open up the court or open up the floor for him. And it's going to have defenses just need to respect him. I mean, we saw Scotty drain some threes. We saw him drain some deep mid-range shots, some mid-rangers, but a full offseason, a full NBA season, rookie of the year under your belt. I mean, this guy really is the limit for Scotty Barnes. He's the, you know, he's the franchise player. He is going to be a superstar, and he's already on pace for it. So very excited for Scotty Barnes. And then you have kind of just the guys who are chipping in in a multi multitude of different ways. Otto Porter Jr., Thaddeus Young, Chris Boucher, maybe a little bit of Ken Birch. But really, Chris Boucher, good shot blocker as far as three-pointers go, can shoot threes great at scoring he was nice in the, in the playoffs for the raptors off of the bench the addition of thaddeus young at the trade deadline was also huge just more depth more rest to your starters guys like siakam i mean they were playing mainly the starters on the raptors last year were playing like 80 minute night 80 minute nights jesus they were playing 40 minute nights so just good depth like i said i love the signing of Otto porter jr i would literally give it an a plus i i think he's just an absolute money acquisition we'll see what we get from malachi and ken birch i'm still very hopeful for both of them we know malachi can run an offense he's very good defender for his position as well and then you lastly you have christian coloco and i'm pretty excited about him as well he fits the raptors vision he fits what you want in a raptors player so as far as the camp battle goes we'll wait and see uh, i'm I really like all these players, but I, I really do think it'll be Delano. Then you'll probably, I think Armani will make it. And uh, my last guess, I would probably go Juancho because I think he's gotten a bad rap in the NBA and I think he can really be valuable. So that's it for today. Hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily Raptors content. Or I guess this is the main page. If you want daily Raptors content, click the link down below my Raptors channel. But on this page, post daily NBA videos. Thank you guys for 14K. We just hit it like yesterday. So hit the like button, hit that sub button, drop some comments down below. What are your expectations for the Raptors this upcoming season? Peace.